Can I say thank you also for the invitation to be here at this very special event. Um, but then it's always great to come back to Oxford. Uh, as you've heard, I was up at Oxford. Um, I also was brought up just outside Oxford and uh, I was, uh, met my husband here. So I've got quite a lot to thank, uh, thank Oxford for. But of course today we're here to give our thanks to Mohammed Amersi and the Amersi Foundation for financing the amazing uh, refurbishment and provision of this lecture room. And your generosity has made this incredible facility possible. I think if you think about Brazenose, and we sort of touched on this as we were walking uh, through uh, to here, <coughs> it's known for its beautiful buildings at the very heart of this city. The view from Old Quad, looking up with the Radcliffe camera, towering over the uh, entrance is uh, iconic. But one of its disadvantages is its small physical size and the limit of its, uh, of its footprint here in Oxford. It's not like my old college, St. Hughes, where I visited about three weeks ago and was looking at a wonderful new building that was up in the garden because they've got all that space to put those uh, buildings up. So Brazenose has been restricted in terms of its ability to, uh, to provide extra spaces. And I think in, in that context, the temptation must have been to sort of take a lot of teaching off-site, to see the college just as somewhere to eat and sleep. But if you do that, actually, it ignores, uh, it forgets the very essence of an Oxford college and the very purpose, in a sense, of an Oxford college because they were founded as academic communities. They were founded as places where people lived together, ate together, uh, socialized together, but also learned together. And that concept, I think, is absolutely vital. Um, and each of those sort of concepts, each of those aspects enhances each other and creates, I think, something that is particularly unique. So by supporting the creation of this new state-of-the-art lecture room, the Mercy Foundation is helping to keep knowledge, discussion and learning at the centre of college life in the 21st century. And this is something which I'm sure Richard Sutton, who co-founded Brazenose College at the beginning of the 16th century, would have approved of. And like you, Mohammed, he was a lawyer who believed in public service, in giving something back. And uh, when students now from the Said Business School, of which, of course, you are a distinguished alumnus, uh, come to Brazenose for lectures, they won't have to gather in the chapel, as I gather they've been doing up till now. They'll be able to be here in this wonderful room. And I'm sure... You know, the chapel's a very beautiful place to be. I'm not sure on a cold winter morning it's perhaps quite as attractive as it might otherwise be. But um, this, so this is a fantastic facility that is going to be available. But then, of course, Mohammed, bringing business and academia together has been one of your passions. And you've been clear about the social responsibility that business has to the communities they operate in and the societies that they serve. And I think you put it yourself with very... Um, great force when you said business has to understand that the privilege of being allowed to make money comes at a price and the price is it has to be responsible. Now those sounds like words that politicians say. <laughs> I may very well have said them at some stage myself, you never know. But dare I say it, when somebody who has succeeded in business says it, actually it can't be ignored. It has much, much greater force. And I just wanted to say a, a word about a couple of issues which Mohammed and I, I think, have close to our hearts and where the Immersity Foundation has been active. One of which is a, a shows about the issue of responsibility for business. And I'm sorry if I'm going a little off-piste and not talking about Brazenose, but I do want to mention modern slavery because we, this is a very important issue which we need, business does need to address. And uh, I know that there's some fantastic work that the Immersi Foundation has been doing in this area. Just to say, so many people think slavery is in the history books only. Now, 40 million men, women and children around the world are in slavery. And this is something we can't ignore. We can't brush under the carpet. We do need to do something about it. We here in the UK have been very active on it, but it needs us to be able to work with business and with others if we're going to deal with this, if we're going to ensure that we don't see people being taken into slavery. And the Immersi Foundation's work in this area has been particularly 
uh, particularly good, particularly looking at the issue of supply chains for businesses and encouraging businesses to understand that they, need, they have that responsibility uh, to understand what's happening in their business supply chains. And the work that the Foundation does in convening discussion, shining a light on the reality of life for millions of people, encouraging ethical entrepreneurship, very important, um, is part of that critical process of ensuring that we end modern slavery. And just one, the other issue I just wanted to touch on is the work that the Foundation has done on interfaith work, countering extremism. Um, this is hugely important in today's world. And I know that you've been working with the uh, Kofi Annan Foundation on uh, helping young people to understand how they can counter violent extremism. Extremely important. It's uh, sad that we have to think about this and do this, but the work that you are doing is very critical for helping to ensure that communities can come together. And at the heart of that is this concept of community and this concept of this place as an academic community, which is why, as I said earlier, this room is so important. And if we are to truly achieve what we want to achieve, we need to ensure that we are protecting, defending the liberal values, the values of free thinking, of free speech, of academic knowledge and understanding, of that concept of learning, of discovery, of people being able to come together, to have discourse together, and through that, to increase the sum of human knowledge and to make the world a better place. I hope that this room will lead to many such discussions and will be indeed a beacon uh, of that academic freedom, that academic um, discovery, that desire to learn more that we should protect and that we should value. This is the world's greatest university. It is, it is important that at the heart of this great university, that discourse is, can, can continue and is enabled to be continuing and with the freedom that is necessary around that. So to the Mohammed and the Immersi Foundation, a huge thank you for all that you have done to ensure that there is this wonderful space that will be used for that very important task of bringing an academic community together and of furthering the sum of human knowledge and in doing so, in bettering the lives of people around the world. Thank you.